friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be using this Lawn Fawn Ahoy Matey stamp set to make a magic color slider card. So I've die cut all my elements out of one sheet of craft card stocks. You can see there were the two pieces there. One is for the card base and one makes up all the rest of my elements except for the white panel that I will need to stamp and color on. So I'm just separating out my different pieces and Lawn Fawn has made it really easy by including everything that you need to create one of these cards within one die set. So the first thing I need to do is attach this white panel inside the frame and that is going to make sure that I can line my images up perfectly when I stamp them down. I'm going to hold that frame together with a little piece of post-it tape and then I'll pop this whole thing in my MISTI. The images that I'm using are the little pirate boy and the treasure chest, and those fit perfectly inside that frame if you line them up just right. I'll close the door of my MISTI to pick up those images, and then I'm going to ink those up with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I'm going to rub my fingers over the surface to make sure I get a really good impression. And then I'm going to stamp on the transparency with Stays On Jet Black ink. And mine was a little on the dry side. I definitely recommend stamping with a freshly inked pad if you can. All right, so on to our coloring. I definitely wanted to give my little pirate boy a little bit of a darker skin tone uh, since he would be out on the high seas <laughs> under the bright sun. So I'm using E51, E53, and E55, and I'm just coloring from darkest to lightest, giving him some shadow up under his hairline and then on the sides of his little hands. And then I decided to make him barefoot as well. I'm adding some R20 to give him some rosy cheeks. For his hair, I'm using E55, E57, and E59. So I colored it in solidly with the E55 first, and then I'm just adding a few flicks of color with the E57 and E59. There's not a lot of hair there to color, but I just added a little bit of texture. And then I also did use those same three shades to color in his little peg leg. And the treasure chest is also going to be those same three browns. So I'm adding that E59 all around the outside edge and the top and bottom just to help it look a little bit more rounded. And then I'm bringing that color out a bit with the E57, coloring in both sides with those two shades. And then I will leave the center bits for the E55 so that there's a little bit of a highlight there since we are going to be stranded on a desert island under the sun. So I'll just finish up that last little bit there and then I'm going to use just the E57 and E59 to color in the inside of the lid. So there wouldn't be as much light there since it's kind of curved downward or facing away from the sun. So I'm not going to include that E55 at all. For his pirate hat, I'm using C5, C7, and C9. I want it to look black, but I definitely want it to have uh, some depth to it. So I'm using the cool grays, and I'm just going very carefully around that little skull and crossbones because I don't want to get any of that dark color into that area. So I'm just coloring darkest to lightest from the outside edge, just as I did the treasure chest. And I will color in his vest with those same three shades as well. I do like to stick to a limited color palette and use colors in more than one area if I can. I just think it gives a very cohesive look to your card. For his shirt, I'm using my favorite red combo, which is R29, R39, and R59. And again, coloring darkest to lightest and kind of shading under his arms and under his chin, leaving the outside edges and his belly for the brightest parts. And then I'm giving him some blue jeans with B95, B97, and B99. And I'm just coloring on the outside edge with that B99 and also a little bit 
uh, between his legs, just like jeans normally are around the seams. For the gold coins, I'm using Y28 and Y26, just giving them a little bit of shadow with that Y28 wherever they overlap each other or just on one side. And then I'll come in and blend that out with the Y26. For the metal bands, I pulled out C1, C3, and C5, but I ended up not using that C1. I thought it was going to be too light, and I wanted this to kind of look really dark, like old iron, so I just stuck with the C5 and the C3. And then I'm going to start to lay in my background, so I wanted to give them some sand to stand on first. So I have the E50, E51, and E53 again, but I did not actually use that E50. I ended up not needing it. So I'm laying in the darkest places with that E53, and then I'm just going to blend out completely with that E51. And there's not a ton of space there anyway, because you only need to color what is going to uh, show through the opening of the magic color slider. And I did add in some dot detail to give it that sandy texture. And for the ocean in the background, I'm using BG11, BG13, BG45, and BG49. I wanted it to be darkest at the horizon line and then kind of fade off into sky at the top. So I started with that BG49. And then I'm going to come in with the BG45 and really blend out the edge of that. I don't want there to be any harsh lines. So it is going to take a little bit of going back and forth to get all of these colors to blend smoothly. I'm continuing that blend upward with the BG13, which has a little bit more of a green tone to it, but I think that'll be a nice transition. And then I'm going to use the BG11 at the top, and I decided to switch to my chisel end because I just wanted to lay down a lot of that color at once. And once that's done, I'm going to take some Lawn Fawn Merman ink, and I'm going to use the two little waves from this set and just add them in the background. This color is going to fade a little bit as it dries into the cardstock, and it'll be just a subtle um, background. I've added some thin eighth of an inch score tape around the outside edge of that window and now I'm just lining up my acetate right over top of the colored image and then I can close that window and press that down into place to make sure that it stays securely right on top and lines up perfectly. There we go. And now I'm going to move on to my card base. I'm taking a bunch of the other images from this Ahoy Matey stamp set, and I'm stamping those down with some Lawn Fawn Walnut ink. And once I have these down, I'm just going to move them to cover the bottom half of the card as well. On the inside, I'm stamping Happy Birthday Matey. And I'm going to take a small acrylic block to go ahead and add in the punctuation marks. And then I will also add the little parrot sitting on top of the Y. And I decided to add the little X marks the spot to the bottom under the sentiment as well. Use the Lawn Fawn stitch trails to add some detail to our map scene. And I kind of changed gears and decided to trim out my card. So I used the front panel and the inside panel. And now I'm going to take some brushed corduroy distress ink and I'm just going to go all along the outside edges and add a little bit of distressing so that it kind of has that old map feel. And I don't mind if it's not perfectly neat because I think that adds to the effect for this particular card. So the reason I decided to trim out these panels instead of using them as my card base as I had originally intended was that when the magic color slider is closed, everything was just very brown and I wanted to be able to add a little bit of a pop of color. And so to do that, I wanted to trim down those panels and add them on top of some pattern paper. So I distressed the edges of all my different pieces 
And now I've got a piece of dark brown cardstock folded to a standard ace two size card. So it is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to add my pattern papers right over top of that. The top piece is trimmed to uh, three and a half inches by four and a quarter, and the bottom is two inches by four and a quarter. And that is from the Pirate's Life 6x6 from Echo Park. Next, I will add my treasure map layer, just using some more Tombow Mono liquid glue, and I'll center that right on top and press that down into place. Now I can finish assembling my slider. I did go ahead and add an extra sentiment to the inside portion of that magic color slider. So that will only be visible when you raise that panel. I added some more of that eighth of an inch score tape to both sides of this little U-shaped piece. And I'm just carefully lining that up. I want it to be perfectly straight in there so that everything slides nicely. And then I can insert my little pull tab and pull off the remaining backer sheets on the front of that little U-shaped piece. And then I will carefully just line that up and press that down into place. I'm going to play with that mechanism a few times just to get it really smooth sliding in that track and then I can glue this down to our card base. I decided to add three little arrows to the top of the frame underneath that pull here sentiment and these are all from the Ready Set Shake stamp set from Lawn Fawn. And as a final embellishment, I'm going to take some four and six millimeter clear droplets from Pretty Pink Posh, and I'm going to add those to my card with some Ranger Multimedia Matte, and I'm just using my Pick Me Up tool to put those down into place. And that will dry perfectly clear underneath, so they'll look like little droplets of water. And that is going to complete our card for today. There's another peek at the inside and a look at that magic color slider in action. The more you play with that, the better it slides. So this was my very first time making one of these and I think it was super fun. So I hope you guys will try it out if you haven't yet. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Here's two extra videos you may also enjoy, so hopefully those will tide you over until the next one. Until then, I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.